Well, here we are, find ourselves back at the kitchen base cabinet. We are, uh, we, we bet on how many bags just cement every pour takes. Unless we're so wrapped up we forget to take the names. But generally we get it. Uh, we had uh, one bed 11 and one bed 11 and a half. Took uh, 11 and one bucket. The rule is uh, full mixes uh, and, uh, and parts without going over. So 11 and a half was over, but uh, he's a new employee, so uh, we paid him uh, a little better than half. And the, uh, the guy who guessed 11, he got the, the full 100. We have one little thing to do after Merienda, uh, where there's uh, one, two, three, four, five bars in a row here. We're going to weave bars back and forth between that. Originally, we were going to use the screens off the windows, the, the, the part that we didn't cover with render. I just cut some rectangles out of it. But uh, we haven't got the windows put in, so we can't take the, the screens out right now. But we'll use them in countertop or something. Anyway, we got to put uh, four more uh, stobs over here. No big thing. And um, I think I'm going to check this down here. The only, uh, well, actually, this whole top is exposed. It's the bottom of the cabinets. He's probably already done this, but I saw it done on the other end. I don't know about this end. That uh, black that's showing her the little eight inch watt thing. That's, uh, here's some more here. Here's a bigger piece. That's polyethylene. It's just uh, put on that uh, form to keep it from sticking. And it may have uh, the bottom edge end up in the concrete or something. And we just uh, uh, cut it off with a uh, a drywall knife. We're going to skim coat uh, this whole thing up to the top where the tile would go. And uh, if it wasn't the main uh, kitchen counter, uh, I would try to finish it as a concrete countertop. But we have to have a molded edge on the top edge of the of the thing, and I can only go one way with it. Because that edge has got to end up flush with the top of the counter. So we're going to leave the the edge high for uh, tile. And we're going to tile this one. But I think the, the, uh, the there's two of these uh, go in the uh, dirty kitchen. One is has cooktops in it and the other has sinks in it. And then there's a bunch of open uh, spaces for working. This, this wide bay over here in, in the main house kitchen uh, is for a dishwasher. And we're going to have that same uh, uh, box. It's taller. So it's eight inches taller than the rest of the, the boxes. Uh, we're going to uh, cast that in the dirty kitchen. And we'll put shelves in it to store stuff. Uh, and we, we can put a padlock on the door because it's right out in the yard. But if anybody needs to steal an old aluminum pot that bad, all they got to do is ask for it. Maybe even buy them a new one. Anyway, that's the size and the shape of the... The base and the toe kick is uh, up under there, uh, I don't know, three inches deep, five and a half inches high. Maybe it's four inches deep. We'll know when we pull the form. Next step is to take this little strip off the outside and change it for a piece that's uh, two feet tall. And that'll uh, be the, the face of the uh, cabinets. And these, uh, oh, here's a pile of them. There's, that's one for the dishwasher. Yeah. The bigger one there. 
I mean, this is just your generic cabinet. It only has to have a place big enough for a P-trap for a sink above it. So, uh, I'm not sure which one it is. It was a drawing done uh, only last year. <laughs> so I can't barely remember it. Um, it had the placement of all the stuff that, that's going to go on top of this uh, uh, counter over here. We also get a uh, counter space along this wall here. One end to the other. That looks to be 15 feet, 14 feet maybe. Um, and that gets two induction cooktops built into the top of it. And uh, one of the microwaves goes on the wall behind it. And over where the heavy electrical wire is, that's two convection ovens, electric convection ovens. I don't know if we're even going to wire this stuff up. It's, it's, uh, it's just so you have a showy kitchen in the house. Nobody uses these kitchens. You'd have to have a, a really terrible typhoon blowing that you wouldn't cook outside. This room here that's full of iron work, <laughs> this is the pantry. And in the center, down here, near that wire, there's an X-shaped uh, set of shelves so that you can reach every, uh, pretty much every shelf from both sides. And the centerpiece uh, is 18 inches by 18 inches and you have to reach in from any one of the 40-some uh, uh, little platforms to get to those. Anyway, that goes in the middle, and then we have uh, cabinets in the uh, along the wall. There's two of them over there. Uh, there's two of them here, and on the end, um, there's counter space with with a box cabinet below it. And uh, no, wait a minute. That's the refrigerator. Refrigerator goes on that wall. This over here is a, is a cabinet with a sink. Uh, and then we get the door there and nothing on this, uh, this piece of wall here is just wall. At least unless, unless she changes it, as far as I know, it's wall. This is the, uh, it's stacked on another one. This is the exterior door for the pantry. It's, uh, seahorses. Uh, everything on this floor is aquatic. Uh, this half door here. Uh, goes on the second floor because it's, it's leaves. All those doors around the uh, atrium, uh, basically plants. And these are uh, exterior windows for the uh, second level. Uh, they're orchids. Uh, there's 11 windows, 10 of them, nine of them are orchids, and there's an iris. And some other thing. I'm not sure what. These were going to be the uh, the artwork for the uh, handrail around the atrium. There's a catwalk around the outside of the atrium. Uh, but that got changed to something else. I forget what it is right offhand. It's flowers. I think it's lotus flowers. I think it's all lotus flowers and one frog. We made an extra frog, so we decided we just use him there. He can watch it. He, he's, a, he's a pond creature, and the whole thing is going to be pond, you know, aquatic plants. These are uh, Amish hex signs uh, to scale. They're, they're supposed to be exact. They represent uh, uh, prayers in the Amish church. And they go... That, that renders all over top of the... the thing that we have to install an inch and a half away and put a, a clean edge on it. But the, those will go into these. The, the actual mounting thing was cast in the wall. I'm not sure that shows up on a camera. Because of the sun. You can maybe make it out. It's got a ridge in the middle and two tapered sides. This is master bathroom. And we saved a little concrete here by putting one of those uh, five-foot uh, round windows between the master bathroom and the master bedroom. Uh, it gives us a little more light and uh, saves concrete, saves render, saves labor. <laughs> Doesn't take long at all to put this thing in. You, you put it up there and uh, uh, there's three bolt holes. 
one, two, three. And uh, those, those match up with the through holes. These things here have, uh, they go right through the wall. They're the spacers. You cut those to how thick you want your wall to be. And uh, anyway, three of those in a row mount this uh, big circular window so it doesn't move around when you pour the concrete. You could pour one side and it wouldn't shift. We pour from the bottom to the top. We don't ever go left to right. Uh, because uh, something happens to the mixture or whatever, you want a, a flat, you know, reasonable surface to, to go off with the, with the rest of the wall. And this one is different. Um, most of the beams stick out three and a half inches on each side. This one here was done with a beam that's the same seven inch thickness as the wall. Because the other side is electrical uh, cabinets, and there's no light in there. The rest of the house is, is daylight lit, at, uh, except in the dark, you know, it's, uh, it's nice and, well, bright enough that you can do anything. And the, the, uh, hey, i got something for Boyette to do now. We have to go around these uh, door openings here on the room-to-room uh, -room doors and fix that edge. We were more interested in getting the render flat than, than uh, fighting with these doors. I might have them do that during rainy season. Other than the fact that it's ugly and I didn't even know it was there, so it didn't bother me. It won't bother me now either. Okay. These are uh, the cover place my wife made for the receptacles. They had to put them in strings to take them to the galvanizer. They don't want to deal with a bunch of little loose pieces. And uh, we got off on other things when we ran out of money. So we're about to get back onto that. that that's what's keeping us from finishing the wiring to make one more try at getting electricity. And I'm not gonna go bend over backwards anymore. I'm gonna give them one more shot. If, uh, if putting this wire in, they turn electric on, that's fine. They don't, well, it would be solar here. Okay, uh, if you uh, like any of this video, <laughs> I can't see why you would. But if you do like it, give us a thumbs up. If you learn something, give us a thumb up. If it's crap, give me a thumbs down and please comment why it's crap. Uh, okay. End of this one.